everyone, and welcome back to Theater Appreciation. I'm your teacher, Professor Garcia, and today what we are going to go over is plot structure. Have you ever read a story or watched a movie and the story was missing something and you weren't sure what? Well, we're going to go over that today. We're going to cover what plot structure is, and we're going to go over the five elements of plot structure that every story needs to have, and if they're missing any of them, the story suffers. So let's get started. First, we need to talk about what plot actually is. The word plot is just another fancy name for story. And structure, I want you to close your eyes for a second and think of the first thing that pops into your head. Structure. What did you see? I'm pretty sure you saw a building, but not a completed building, more like an erector set of a building. And so that's exactly what it is. It's the skeleton of the story. And every story since the beginning of time is the same. They are constructed the same. And they've had a lot of years to kind of iron out what works and what doesn't work. And we're gonna go over each of those elements today. Now the exposition is the very, very beginning of a story. And this is where all of the information that the audience has to get in order to follow the rest of the story is set up. The exposition itself has four components, and each of those components has to be established before you can move on. The first and most important is the setting. We need to know where and when this story is taking place. You do this in any story you give, even when you turn around and you're like, yesterday I was walking down the street. We know when and where automatically. Yesterday, the street, that's your setting. Perfect. The second component is we need to be introduced to the main characters. A year ago, these uh, cops and lawyers wouldn't dare cross any of you. I mean, what happened? Your audience, when they're watching the story, they're looking for who they should be relating to or rooting for within this narrative. So you have to give that to them. We don't need to know side characters. We don't need to know backstory. We just need to know who to care about. So you have to set that up early. The next thing that you have to set up are the rules of the world. Now, every single story that has ever been told doesn't take place in this reality even when you tell a story about your own life. It's not happening in this reality, it's happening in a parallel reality. See, when you tell a story, you are telling the audience to come into your version of reality where you are the hero in the story. And we suspend our disbelief and we follow this narrative, we follow your journey knowing you are the hero and you are fighting the forces of the outside world and we are rooting for you. And so, in that story, there are going to be different rules. One of the rules is you are the hero, right? So the same thing applies when you are setting up any story. Let's say your story is Harry Potter and there's magic. Well, you need to set up that magic exists early within the story. You can't spring it on your audience later. If they're superheroes, you need to set that up early. <laughs> that superpowers exist. If your character has abnormal abilities, you have to set that up early within the story so your audience can follow along. Now, this doesn't just apply for superpowers, it applies for normal things as well. One rule in stories that people just blindly go along with, even though it's not realistic in any way, is the idea of love at first sight. They say when you meet the love of your life, time stops, and that's true. When we see two characters fall in love and they see each other for the first time, the writers and the storytellers want you to know that their connection is special. But love at first sight does not exist in reality. That is a convention of story. The only people who believe in love at first sight in real life are stalkers. 
But that is a convention of story, and that's a rule of the world within a romance, or a lot of different stories. And what they're doing is they're trying to set up this relationship between the two people, that, and we want you to root for them. Another thing is this idea of true love. Now, in stories you've heard, This is true love. I think this happens every day. True love is a convention or a rule within the world of stories. It does not happen in real life. The idea of true love does not exist. I'm going to give you an example. Do you love food? Do you love your parents? Do you love your significant other? Now, do you love all of them equally? Do you love all of them the same way? Absolutely not. That would be disgusting and illegal. <laughs> and so, that doesn't mean that that love for each of them is any less true, it just means it's different. Now, Tolstoy in Anna Karenina has this beautiful quote. He says, if there are as many hearts as there are people, then there are that many ways to love. That is more like reality than this idea of true love. But in a two-hour story, we as the writers or the storytellers need you to root for and understand that these two people should be in love and they should be together. And the idea or concept or rule of true love comes into effect just to serve the story. But that's what a rule of the world is. You have to set those up early within your story. The final thing within your exposition that you have to set up is what a normal day is like. So if magic exists, if true love exists, what does normal, what's a normal everyday world like? Nelson, have you got any papers? Nelson. I owe you about 15p. You have to show us what normal is, so when normal is broken, we get it. That's why you're setting it up. See, the beginning of the story is not sustainable. Whatever this life is, it's not sustainable for the main character. If the main character stays there, they'll die or leave an, lead an unfulfilled life. But things change. Something happens that causes everything to change, and then the character is transformed. Every single story is about the transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Well, in the beginning, we have a caterpillar living in the caterpillar world. But we have to understand that the world is different than ours, and there are going to be things that change that move this caterpillar into a butterfly. And that brings us to our next point. The inciting incident. The inciting incident is the thing that happens that causes everything else to happen. If it's Spider-Man, Peter Parker gets bit by the spider. If you don't have that happen, it's not Spider-Man. It's a different story altogether, right? If it's Harry Potter, we have a letter showing up. In a romantic story, it's the two lovers meeting. It doesn't matter what, like every story is unique, but there is a moment or an incident. There's something that happens that causes everything else to happen. And that word in sight means to start. Some writers call this the catalyst, but it's the moment where the problem is introduced. From that point forward, now we're into your story. And this is the rising action. The rising action is the series of events that build tension and lead toward the climax. The rising action is the struggle. We really want to see our main character struggle to overcome this problem, and the more they struggle, the more we root for them, and the harder the journey is, the more we celebrate with them at the end when it's over. That's where we want to get, 
and the rising action is really, that's your story. It's a bunch of problems that the hero has to keep overcoming in order to get to the end of the story. And finally, it builds towards the climax. The climax is your highest point of tension. If it's a romantic movie, it's the two lovers kissing. That's why in a story it takes so long for the two lovers to kiss. Because we understand that part of the rules of the world are that when these two people kiss, when they lock lips, the true love is sealed. So that's why you play with this distance and making sure that they, the two lovers never quite kiss until the very, very end. The climax is over once their lips touch. The same thing happens if, if a gun is involved and the gun shot. As long as the gun is there and it's loaded, right, you have tension building. But as soon as the gun is fired, somebody's dead, the story is over. And so it's not the climax is in the two kissing, it's not the gunshot happening, it's the moment right before. <laughs> That's when tensions are at their highest, and tension is usually when you're waiting for something to happen. The denouement. Now you're all gonna learn a new word. Say this with me. De, nu, moi, denouement, denouement. Now, denouement is a French term meaning to unwind or untie. Tension is designed to tie knots in your stomach, and the denouement is designed to untangle them. The denouement is where your story is returning to as normal as possible. Are they ever going to be normal? No. Usually somebody's died, they've found the love of their life, some big event has happened, so things are never going to be normal again, but they can return to as normal as possible, and they'll find a new normal within this world. And this new normal, this is where the sequel will come in. Grandpa? Maybe you could come over and read it again to me tomorrow. As you wish. What you are going to do is you're going to go watch a movie or a TV show and you are going to break down the plot. I want you to identify each of the four elements of the exposition or the setup. Then I want you to identify the inciting incident. I want you to identify 10 different plot points that are all part of the rising action. So 10 events that build tension and lead towards the climax. I want you to figure out what the climax is. Remember, the climax is not the main thing that happens. It's the moment right before that conflict is resolved. And then I want you to identify three things of the denouement or the falling action. So what you're going to be able to do is to plot out every element of plot structure so that you can know what is missing from the story or why the story works. Thank you very much for coming with me on this journey. I look forward to seeing what you give me, and I'll see you soon.